Dale Spoonwarm and his wife are the creators of From Sea to Spoon, an app. And that began um, as they converted their backyard from an urban lawn into a food farm in 2015. And now they have invited us to do the same through their free iOS and Android mobile app. The free app makes it simple for you to grow your own fruits, vegetables, and herbs in your backyard, patio container, vegetable, or food garden. Growing your own food doesn't have to be difficult, and Dale's mission is to show you how you can grow your own organic produce economically, efficiently, and sustainably. Additional resources are available on Mr. Dale Spoonmore's blog and social media outlets. Everyone in Hill help me introduce and welcome Dale Spoonmore. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, everyone. How's it going? I'm excited to be here. Uh, thank you to Langston University, uh, to Micah, to Tracy, to everyone from, from Langston. Um, I always enjoy coming to these events, and they're some of my favorites. So um, I'm going to be talking about this in a little bit, but really what I want to talk about today is what got me into gardening, because this kind of just all started for me about five years ago. Um, and to show you, this was me in 2008 when my first daughter was born. And I was 340 pounds, and my diet was mostly fast food, pizza, you know, things like that. And I spent pretty much all of my time at a computer. Um, to give you a little more background on that, growing up, I wasn't always like that. You know, I spent a lot of time outside when I was a kid. I played golf. I did a lot of that kind of stuff. But then once I graduated high school and I started working at a software company, I pretty much sat in front of the computer all day. And, 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 my, and everything kind of started going downhill health-wise. Um, I had my gallbladder taken out in my early 20s. Um, I had a tendon in my foot that ruptured because I tried to run when I wasn't ready for it and I just couldn't support myself. I was just, I had a lot of heart issues and there's a lot of health issues in general. And whenever my first daughter, Brooklyn, was born, it was a moment for me where things were gonna be different from that moment on. I just, it was just the switch that flipped and I started obsessing about getting healthy. And Back then, it was really, I didn't know much about nutrition. It was just, it was a numbers game. I knew that 2,000 calories were in a pound. I was trying to lose 100 pounds as fast as I could, and it was a math problem. So I ate 2,000 calories every day. I burned 4,000 calories every day. That was the, what I did every single day, and I lost 100 pounds in nine months, but I did not pay attention to where the food came from. It was just calories. And what I discovered was that the way I got to this point was that um, I have a lot of issues with anxiety and depression. And for a long time, I kept that bottled up and I ate to overcome it or I drank, or I, I, I found other outlets. And, um, and that was where I was whenever I met my wife, Carrie. I was, um, you know, I lost a lot of weight, but I still had a lot of issues with anxiety and depression. And she changed my life. When I met her, she, um, she's a nurse and she helped me figure out what was going on with me because before then, I didn't really know what was going on. I just knew that starting, uh, you know, when I, in my 20s, I would have these panic attacks um, where I would just kind of start crying uncontrollably. I didn't really know when it was going to happen or why it would happen. It just hit me. And um, until I met her, I hid them from everyone. I never told anyone about them. I would like, go lock myself in a room and, you know, or in a bathroom and not let anyone see it. And she saw one, and, and that led us to, uh, to this book because she, she knew that we could help fix this problem. So uh, I got this book called The Depression Cure, and it talked about how I could manage um, all this stuff with you know, water, food, exercise, sleep, mindfulness, sunlight, and social activity. And um, everything made sense to me in this book, and, and we decided we were gonna dedicate our lives to following this book. So it started with the water and the food. I had to completely cut out soda, because I am an addict, and if I have one can of Dr. Pepper, I am binging like, a whole weekend full of like soda. So I've got to completely avoid it. Um, you know, next was food. And, and this is really where gardening comes in because we were, grow, we were buying a lot of spinach and kale because they're high in magnesium and calcium. And those are specifically the things that really help with anxiety and depression. And we were spending like 10, 20 bucks a week on spinach and kale. And um, I, I really like efficiency, and I don't like wasting money and wasting things. So I, I knew that if I threw seeds in the ground and it rained, some food might come up. And that's kind of where the whole gardening journey started. Um, these other things are important, but I want to go in and talk about the gardening side. So we started in our backyard. Um, this is my family here. 
I zoomed in a little much. Y'all can still see that. Okay, so we started with the square foot gardening method. Um, I, I come from an engineering, you know, computer, computer background, so this whole method made a lot of sense to me. If you're not familiar with it, the, the idea is basically you divide up a garden bed into squares, and then each square can be planted individually. And it has these formulas for how many can go in each square and what goes next to each other and all this stuff. And I started obsessively um, reading as much as I could about this and learning and, and, and practicing and um, spending time, you know, with the Cleveland County Master Gardener program when Tracy was down there, learning from her and learning from people like Micah, watching everything he had on YouTube with the Oklahoma Gardening Channel. Um, so, so anyway, this was, this was our yard when we started. And before it was just, you know, a regular backyard with, with grass. And uh, we started building, and, and basically what we did was we covered the entire yard with cardboard and, and wood chips. So you can see kind of as we went along, um, I just got a little, little obsessed, and, and finally this is what our yard looks like now. Um, so <laughs> uh, I have a lot of other talks on our website that go into detail about all of this. I'm not going to do that much, that much of this today. I want to spend today talking about why I do all of this, because I feel like that's really the most important thing, you know, for me is... Um, is why I do this, and, and it really comes down to, to the food. Because whenever we started doing this, and we started eating out of the garden, it was a moment for me the first time I had spinach. Because before then we were buying spinach from the store, and, um, and it, just, it really wasn't, I wasn't excited to eat it ever. It was just kind of like, this is what the book says I need to eat, I'm gonna eat it. But the first time I grew spinach out of the garden, and I picked it and I tasted it, it was a moment, because I realized that I'd been lied to my whole life, that the stuff I saw as spinach was not spinach, that this was spinach, and it had like this cool and crisp flavor to it, and, it, and every variety tasted different, and, and, and I craved it once I had it. And, and, and it changed something within me because I realized that until then, until that moment, I was eating fake food, and that once I started eating the food out of the garden, my body started craving it. And that was really when this became an obsession because that same effect that I had with spinach happened with peas and strawberries and beans and okra and everything else that we've grown, where it just, you realize that with that added taste comes the added health benefits, the added nutrition and all of that. So, so this is where we were, this is our yard recently, but this is where we were back in you know, 2016, was uh, back in that area. And um, this is our, so we've had a bunch of stuff coming out of the garden, I always like to show this picture. <laughs> Um, you know, so this is kind of retrospective of, of where, we, where we started and kind of where we were. So this is where we were leading into the end of 2016, where I, I learned a lot and I, um, we had learned how to grow food for ourselves, but we weren't really doing much to share that knowledge. And it was kind of in the back of my mind that I, I felt like I needed to do something to to make it easy for other people to do this, because there were a lot of stuff I had to calculate. We had spreadsheets galore. Um, I've, been, I've been in the software industry since I graduated high school, basically, and, and I knew that an app could make this a lot easier. Um, so that was the idea that we had. And, and, um, in 2016, at the end of 2016, this was around the time of the election, and I was waiting in line to vote, and they were playing the World Series on TV, a repeat of the World Series, the Cubs and the Indians. And I don't know if you all remember that week, but America felt different that week, because even the Indians were happy the Cubs won. And it was just different. Like everyone was like cool with each other and it was just all cordial and someone fell down, they picked each other up. And I was just kind of like asking myself like, why can't it be that way all the time? And I felt like this question came over me of, well, what are you doing to fix it? And that was the day that we started from seed to spoon. So the day of the 2016 election, we came home from voting and we started working on our website and we dedicated um, basically our lives at this point to helping people grow food and to making it easy for other people to grow food. Um, all the time that I spent beforehand, like, uh, I, I have a lot of issues with insomnia and not being able to sleep. In the past, I would, like, read news and be really up to date on everything going on in the world, but it did nothing good for anybody. It just made me stressed out. So all of that time started going into this, and we started a website, and we started making a lot of YouTube videos. I felt so silly, and I still do when I'm out there doing these, but we started just basically showing our garden, talking about how we do things, um, you know, whenever I found a cool little trick, I would shoot a video about it. Um, and, and we started doing events, too, at local nurseries. So trying to get kids interested in gardening, because I, I felt like if I would have been introduced to this stuff at an early age, my life would have been completely different. 
Um, and I wouldn't have had some of the demons I have now, if you will, some of the anxieties and, and some of the issues with depression. So we wanted to try and get kids exposed to stuff. So we started doing events like that. Um, and we were having a, you know, we were having a lot of impact, we felt like. And, um, and, but, but really, the, the problem we started running into was that uh, we were creating a blog post for like every single plant and then every single pest and then a video for each one, and then if something changed, we had to make a new video, and it was just like chaos of staying up every night and like making videos, and, um, and that's really when we decided, okay, we, we've got to make an app. So um, I started learning to code in July of 2017, Carrie started learning as well, and we started building it that summer, and then in December, um, I think it's a slide come up here, in December we released uh, the first version of our app, um, last, I guess it was um, last year. So, um, what our app does is it lets you choose from 100 different foods. You can tap on this list here. Once you tap on the plant, it takes you into a detail screen that has planting dates that are calculated based on your nearest weather station. We have a database of 5,000 weather stations across the country, and we use those to cross-reference and then determine which one you're closest to, and then planting dates accordingly. We also have a lot of other information on that page that I couldn't fit on the screenshot, but it gives you all the information you need to know about how to grow it. We have the companion plants that grow well next to each plant listed out. We list out the, the pests that attack each plant, and we have details about how you can handle those pests. Um, everything we have in the app is, uh, is organic. We don't have any pesticides we recommend because we don't use them in our garden. So um, we have a lot of different uh, things we've learned in there. Um, we have our videos from YouTube pull in automatically, our blog posts, things like that. And uh, we have a new version of the app that's gonna be coming out this year that lets you log your plantings, and then it guides you through growing. So it'll give you uh, notifications telling you when, the, when to estimate the harvest, when to estimate seed sprouting, when you should water, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, it's going to walk you through, through all of that. So um, that's our app. We would love for you to download it. Let us know what you think about it. We're always looking to add new things into it. If you have new tips, new things like that, we're always looking to add that kind of stuff in. Uh, we're also very active on, on social media, things like that. Carrie does a lot of stuff on there where we're showing what's going on in our garden. Um, again, our, our social media page, when we started it, we wanted it to be um, a place where you could go to that you're never going to see anything negative. That was a big thing about it because especially in the internet in 2016, everything was negative and we wanted to, to make a place where you could come to our page and you knew that it was going to be something gardening or a kid chasing a butterfly or something cute, right? It was going to be something that made you happy in some way, shape, or form. So that's the goal behind our social media. Um, and, and really what we're looking, what we're doing now is, um, is trying to make an impact with, with the youth. Because I feel like that's really the key, is getting kids plugged into this. And what I found is that kids are really receptive to this. So we spent some time in, in classrooms going through and teaching kids about both coding and gardening, kind of a combination of the two. And when I look at programs like Restore OKC, uh, Keisha's in here um, somewhere, and, and what they're doing, and, and all the different programs around the state, I think that is the key. Because kids today are growing up in the exact same situation I was growing up in 20 years ago, where I was on the computer all the time. That's all I did. And I was pretty rare. I mean, back then, not a lot of the kids were doing that. I was the only friend I had that was doing that. Now it's all the kids are doing it. And they're going to run into the exact same problem I did, um, where when you stare at a screen too much, it makes you crazy. Um, and, it, and the blue light staring at your face at night, make sure you can't go to sleep. It just throws off all your circadian rhythms. It messes with you. Um, not saying technology is bad, obviously, I, I have a software company, so I can't, but I think the key is combining the two and finding ways to bring kids into nature through their phones. So, um, so really, I'm, you know, I'm encouraged to see the programs, uh, the, the Ag and the Classroom program the representative talked about, that is amazing. I'd love to see the, the movement we're making on this, but, um, but yeah, I, I just really wanted to, to leave it by saying that I think that the more we can do to get the youth plugged into nature, the better off society is going to be for our kids and our grandkids and everyone. Um, so are there any questions or anything you want to hear more about? All right. Oh, yes, in the back. So the question is, did we plant anything off the Farmer's Almanac? We've not used that as a resource a whole lot. Mostly what we've used, so for, for our specific growing in Oklahoma um, you know, guidance, we're looking at the OSU guides, things like that. Uh, when, we grow out, when we go out to, to national data, um, we're really sourcing information. So a lot of the information we have is variety-based. So that's coming directly from the seed companies. We have a partnership with Burpee where we pull in their data. So that variety of information is from there. As far as planting dates and things like that are concerned, 
um, it's based off the nearest uh, weather station's freeze date. So everything is keying off of that, and then that variety's uh, preference for time away from freeze date, basically. So we've not really pulled in any of the moon-based stuff or any of that kind of stuff. It's definitely an interest and something we would like to do. It's just we've already got so many balls in the air, you know, to go and do so much at a time. But it's definitely something we would like to do. Oh, I'm not saying I don't believe that at all. I just want to experiment. So I, one of my favorite things about this gardening stuff is I'm always experimenting with different stuff. So right now I've got the same variety of tomato in a three gallon, a five gallon, a seven gallon, and a 15 gallon smart pot. And I'm doing experiments to see, you know, differences. I'm always doing that kind of stuff. So the moon based stuff, yes, I want to try it, but I don't, I don't do anything halfway. So if I'm going to do it, I've got to have spreadsheets laid out. I have to have a whole plan for like, it's just, I go insane. So I've got to like prepare room in my life for that. So when, when my kids get a little bit older, maybe I've got four of them and they're everywhere and they're running around. It's hard to manage. So. Yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Yes. So we have three rabbits that we have on purpose. We have giant rabbits, Flemish giants that we got because uh, rabbit manure is one of the best things you can use. So um, we don't have a lot of issues because we have a giant, we have an eight foot fence around our garden and we have a cat and we have two dogs, three dogs. Um, so we really haven't had any issues. Um, what we have found in the past is when we have had issues with rabbits, a motion activated sprinkler works really well. So you just set that up in the area, and when they walk by it, it starts spraying water and shooting it everywhere, and that scares them off. Yes? So uh, we, we live in just an urban backyard. I, I, we have made some, they're not really high tunnels. It's PVC with, you know, plastic going over it. They're low tunnels, I guess is what you would call them, a caterpillar tunnels, something more like that. So um, we don't have a high tunnel, so I haven't really been able to practice with it that much, um, unfortunately. Hopefully one day we'll be able to get some land and then we'll, then I'll go crazy on that side too. <laughs> it's probably good I don't have a lot of land right now though, because, <laughs> yes. So the app, um, we have an affiliation with Amazon where we link to products on Amazon and we get a small percentage of that purchase, but that's gonna be going away really soon because we're launching our own store. So we have a partnership with Smart Pots um, and with Seating Square and with Burpee and some other companies. So when we first launched, no one, wanted to, no one would even take our calls, right? So we had to, the only way we could have a revenue stream was to have these Amazon affiliate links. We only link to the products we buy and we believe in. And then if someone buys that, we get like seven or 8% of the purchase, something like that. So, yes, yeah. So the things on the, in that list are handpicked. So I went through all Burpee pro products, picked the stuff I liked. Now we do have a tab in there where we have every single Burpee product, but the ones that are on the plants page are handpicked from us. So if you're looking at cucumbers, we have like uh, cucumber beetle traps. We have stuff like that. If you're looking at squash, we have other stuff. So each one of those one pages is, is customized for that plant. Um, and like I said, we're going to be pulling out those Amazon ads and replacing them with our own store. So really soon we're going to have smart pots for sale. Um, we're going to put them in bundles though to make it easier. So really our goal, where we want to get to this, is have an app where you choose what you want to grow, and then you get everything you need to grow that delivered to your door when you need it. So we're building the software piece of that now and we're starting to build a store, eventually those two are gonna merge, and it's gonna be like $30 a month, you get whatever you wanna grow delivered to your door with the supplies type thing, based on how much you want. So that's, that's what we're working towards. Um, eventually we'll get there. Yes? Uh, we, we consume it and give a lot away. Um, we, we have enough that we could sell, but we just, that's not what I wanna be doing with my Saturday. I'd rather hang out at the farmer's market and look at everyone else's stuff than be there trying to peddle stuff. You know, that's just not, doesn't sound like fun. Now, my daughter, when she gets of age where she's looking for a job, then it's going to be, all right, let's start selling some plants, and that can be her first job, you know, I think. So that, that might be where we start doing some of that stuff, but we spend, like, all of our time pretty much managing the software and that at this point. That's, and that's one thing I ran into a bit of a problem was last year, I didn't get out in the garden enough, and the anxiety and the depression and the panic attacks came right back. And I had to take basically two or three months off and just find myself again because the winter was so bad. It was just there was no sun, and I'm really affected by that kind of stuff. So, so it's, it's hard right now because we, we both have full-time jobs. I'm a software developer for United Healthcare, and Carrie's a professor at OSU, or at OU, sorry. She teaches nursing. She used to be at OSU, so it's not. <laughs> so um, it's just, you know, trying to keep up right now is, is very difficult. And last year we were running a little too hard. So now it's, we realize this is a marathon, we gotta slow down a little bit. And so the, the Garden Plus feature that I've been talking about um, was supposed to come out like a month ago, but it's gonna come out probably next week now because it's just we just had to take some time off and 
find ourselves, you know? That's the hard thing about all this, because I talk so much about being out in the garden and stuff, but then I don't do it, and then it's, you know, so. But the past few months have been awesome. The weather's been great, and I've been out in the garden every single day, and I built, I, the whole other half of my yard I, I ripped up and put in, turned into gardens too, so <laughs> that was, it was fun to have a big project like that to, to knock out again. Any other questions or anything you want to know more about or see more about? Yes. Um, I don't think I could calculate that, but I, what I can tell you, um, I don't have a picture of it. So last month, so in, in the other side of the yard when we built it, right, we built that with the idea of what would I do if I was starting over, right, and I was trying to like do this the most efficient way possible. And what we ended up doing was getting uh, the, big, the Smart Pots big bag long beds, the 12 foot ones, we got two of those, and then got a tunnel and arched it between the two. Hopefully y'all can visualize this. We have pictures of it all over our social media if you wanna see this. But, and then on, um, that's on the inside of the, of the tunnel, and then on the outside we've got smart pots kind of all around it. So that setup was about $400 um, to do that, and that would be more than enough for a family of four. Um, now obviously if you grow in the ground, it's way cheaper, but that's a lot more work and just, yeah, no, it does take a lot of soil to fill those smart pots. Um, briefly, I'll mention how I fill all of our smart pots is I use the square foot gardening mix. Um, it's one third vermiculite, one third peat moss, and one third compost. On the, on the peat moss, you can switch out for coconut core, and for vermiculite, you can back down on it because it is expensive. So I'll back down to like 15% vermiculite and just put in more, comp more compost and peat moss. And then for compost, it's important to get sources from as many places as you can and then combine them together. So Minic Materials has like four different types, so I get one of each of those. Uh, Markham's has a pretty good compost. I just get, I get compost from as many sources as I can, but before I use it for the first time, I make sure I test it, because I have been bitten by compost that had herbicide in it before. So uh, a simple test is just to put some pea seeds in a mix that has the compost in it, and then put, the pea, and put other pea seeds in another container that does not have the compost in it, and then after three weeks, if those peas have like twisting and curling on it, then you've got some issues, so. Hopefully that made sense. Yes. Yeah. Um, so the seeding square, I don't think I have a picture of it anywhere. I don't have one. So it has holes that are spaced out so that you can um, see what, uh, what, what, you know. So for carrots, uh, they're 16 per square. So there's a hole, you know, every two inches so you can place the, the carrot into there for perfect spacing. It's really nice for the 16 per square and the nine per square, especially if you're OCD like me. I don't use it for anything that's four below because that's easy enough for me to just do it by hand. But the thing it's best for is for kids because it's color coded also. So our two year old learned her colors and her numbers and spacing and all of that from this device. Um, and she, when was she, was she, how old was she? She was really young when she learned this stuff. And I remember thinking I should have that with all my kids because it made it way easy. And also just for them to visualize all this stuff. It really helps kids click with the idea of square foot gardening. So um, we love the seating square for that. I don't really use it for anything other than the 16 or 9 per square anymore for us. Though. Thank you.